welcome to tonight's Citywide Sports Network broadcast on KCWX. It's the Gun Automotive Group pregame show presented by Gun Automotive Group, where buying your next vehicle is real simple. GunAuto.com. It's a Southland Conference matchup. UIW and Abilene Christian alongside Chuck Mekatanik, Mike Lefko with you. Chuck, this is an exciting game, conference matchup, and a chance for two teams looking for that critical win. You know, and I think the records are a little bit deceiving, Mike. I mean, I think both of these offenses are coming on here in a little bit of a role and what I'm really looking forward to tonight is seeing what UIW learned about itself coming off a tough loss the last time out then they had a bye week so I think we're going to see a whale of a ball game tonight. Well UIW has a real quality running back kind of new to the program in Derek Mitchell. Yeah infinitely new to the program as it were I mean this young man the last time he was toning a rock before he got here was at the University of Iowa. He got to school here late with all the paperwork, but once he got to practice, the coaches noticed how he just popped. I mean, he looks the part, and he obviously is coming off a huge week a week ago for these Cardinals. And they also like what he's been able to bring to this young squad in terms of leadership. On the other side, for the Wildcats, they have a big play threat in Carl Whitley. Hurt last year, but he really has some nice ability. And I think a lot of fans here in San Antonio might remember this young man from Roosevelt High School right here in San Antonio. And again, just a big play type of guy. He's had two touchdowns already this year of over 30 yards. And the last time Abilene Christian had a touchdown of over 70 yards, Carl Whitley did that during the 2015 season, and he did it against the same UIW football team. Well, down on the field, the third member of our broadcast crew, Valerie Lopez, caught up with head coach Kennan and asked him how they feel about finally playing a home game. Oh, extremely. You know, it, 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 there's no place like home. It's, we've always said that. We play better here at home than we do on the road. And, and we've been gone for three weeks, and it's, it feels like we've been gone forever. And so we're extremely excited about the game today. It is kind of strange, Chuck. We're five weeks into the season. They had three road games and a bye. And you're finally playing your first home game. I imagine the hype is pretty big. Yeah, it's a Southland Conference. It's a league game. You got two teams evenly matched. Man, I say let's get it on. Let's hit somebody. We're ready to do this thing. Well, not quite yet. More pregame coverage coming up, up next. The Gun Automotive Group pregame show after this. Welcome back to the Gun Automotive pregame show. Time now for Guns Keys to Victory. Real simple keys to victory brought to you by Gun Automotive. Real simple. Chuck Rabbling, Christian, what will they have to do to win this game? Well, first of all, they got to put last week's tough loss behind them. And then secondly, they're really impressed with what they've seen on tape from UIW. They want to be able to match the Cardinals' physicality. And then lastly, trust the process. And then for the Cardinals, they want to put their last game behind them, which coincidentally enough was against Stephen F., the same team that knocked off ACU last week. UIW, though, also wants to dominate both lines of scrimmage. And then, hey, make your quarterback look good. You've got to establish the running game like you did a week ago and then be able to get the ball outside to your playmakers. Coming up next, Abilene Christian and UIW Southland Conference matchup up next on the Citywide Sports Network. Tonight's game time conditions are brought to you by John Wayne Service Company. When you need heating, cooling, plumbing, or electrical help, make just one call to fix it all. Call 210-293-6700. A little bit warmer, 86 degrees, but beautiful. And the rain has cleared, and Chuck, what perfect weather for football. Yeah, let's get her going. Jamari Gilbert back there to receive for UIW. He's a speedster. Find some space, and Abilene Christian throws him back. Just shy of the 20-yard line. I think it's going to be really interesting to watch how both of these teams attack this football game because, again, they're both coming off losses, and ACU's got a first-year head coach. They really felt like they were making progress, but they kind of stubbed their toe last week, and Coach Adam Doyle told us he felt like it was a step back. And then for the Cardinals, you know, they lost a heartbreaker two weeks ago to Stephen F. Tried a little flea flicker late in the game that was tied. Ended up having a pick six and a walk off for the other team. So interesting stuff to see how this plays out. Sean Brophy, the sophomore, gets the start. He's come in since Taylor Laird was injured in week one. Out to the short side and nothing there. Wrapped up immediately by Eric Hune. 
Tonight's UIW starting lineup brought to you by IHOP. Eat up every moment. We just mentioned Sean Brophy, the sophomore out of Scottsdale, entered mid-third quarter against Fresno State. The one we talked about pregame, Chuck, Derek Mitchell, the Iowa transfer. He's got some big-time college experience. Yeah, there's going to be a guy that they're leaning on today. As we said, a huge week a week ago was the first time all year, really, that the Cardinals got the running game going. Wearing brand new jerseys as well. Gray uniforms for the Cardinals. And here's a look now at the starting lineup on defense for Abilene Christian. Bolu Anafade, the sophomore, one of their better tacklers on the season, 36 tackles this year. And of course, it's brought to you by IHOP, eat up every moment. The Abilene Christian fans, they made the trip down. They're getting loud with a third down upcoming to start this drive. Brophy over the middle. Zaire Andre had it, couldn't hang on. Knocked away by the tight defensive pressure of Adonis Davis. The cornerback for the Wildcats, and that'll be a three and out. Yeah, really good job by Davis there closing, and I thought they were going to have enough for the first down. Good throwing lane, everything looking good for the Cardinals, but Adonis had other ideas, a little strip there at the end, and forcing UIW into an early punt situation. You know, punting, though, has been one of the stronger aspects for the Cardinals. Joe Zima booted a 75-yarder earlier this season. There's a high looping kick, Chase Coakley, Calls for the fair catch, and Abilene Christian will take over at the 30-yard line. Slow starts have kind of plagued both of these teams, and it was UIW two weeks ago. Fell behind 21 to nothing to Stephen F. Austin. Interestingly enough, both of these teams, their last game was against Stephen F. Austin. And you're right. I think they were hoping for a little quicker start than a three and out, but once they got going the last time out, they were red hot. I mean, put a bunch of points on Stephen F. in the second half and made that a football game, and... We're just one play away from winning it. Now Dallas Seeley, the redshirt junior, he's been the starter for the past two seasons. He has some pretty good wide receiver options around him. And off goes to Tracy James as he powers through for a little. Here's the starting lineup for Abilene Christian, brought to you by IHOP, beat up every moment. Just mentioned Dallas Seeley. Had a really nice game two years ago here, 346 yards passing and five touchdowns. And Carl Whitley, as you said, the San Antonio native, so playing back in front of some hometown fans. And as we said at the onset, is a very much a deep threat. James again trying to probe nothing there. The UIW 3-4 defense charging through. And let's take a look at that UIW defense. Jamarcus Williams highlighted him in the secondary. Williams, eight tackles this season, had six passes broken up this year. And it's that 3-4 led by Darius Montgomery that really made the charge there. Yeah, and this is an offense that's still trying to find itself. You know, they're under Adam Doral for the first time. They spread it out last year. They want to run the ball a lot more this year, and they're still trying to figure that out. Seeley has time. To the left side, tipped and almost intercepted by UIW. And look at that defensive stop there by the Cardinals. So two three and outs for both teams. It's, you know, kind of feeling each other out early going. Yeah, had double coverage back there and a really good job playing underneath by Cam Knight. I think he'd like to have that one back, but at least was able to knock that ball away and bring up a punting situation for ACU. Zaire Andres back there at the 25-yard line. Another good punter in Abilene Christian. And that's Laria punting it away. Andre lets it bounce. This one's going to go down at the one-yard line. So Andre looks like he got caught up. Should I go? Should I not? And there it goes. It'll be a tough road to go for UIW. Opening possessions in and out for neither one. We'll see what UIW does after this. A couple of opening three and outs, and now UIW all the way backed up to its own end zone. Brophy just charges the pile forward. Good movement by the offensive line, though. Tonight's first quarter on CSN Football is brought to you by North Star Dodge. 
Open Sunday at North Star Dodge is your savings destination. Brophy able to fall forward for about a yard. And that offensive line's pretty experienced. Actually, Chuck, you look around the UIW roster, a lot of experience with those seniors. And Derek Mitchell, we talked about the senior transfer. Sean Brophy, actually one of the, the new guys as a sophomore. Yeah, I had to come in, played a little bit last year, but he's filling in admirably. And who knows, he may have won the spot with the way he's playing lately. Probing four, but still not much going. Cardinals just trying to back it out of the shadow of their end zone. That's where punting can really change the game. And we mentioned kind of jokingly that you know punting could be a great offensive weapon, but Joe Zima can kick a 75-yarder, and Simon Laurier knocked that one all the way down to the one. Yeah, and Larry Kennan, as you see his record here, it's hard to believe it's been his sixth year here, but he's had to take this program from the D2 ranks now into the FCF's level, and he's done a very good job of doing that. They're making big strides here at UIW. Brophy tosses over to Gilbert. Knocked at the line and trying to stretch forward. He's not going to be there. A good tackle made by Balu Anafade. Oh, he did a really good job stretching for that. Made it a little closer than I think we thought it was going to be there at first. Really good job dropping back and seeing the blitz all the way and then getting it out quickly. Another punting opportunity coming up here for UIW. CSN's first half scoreboard is sponsored by John Wayne Service Company. Just one call to fix it all. AC, plumbing, electrical, and heating. Call 210-293-6700. Whistles stop before this UIW play. A completed play. catch is under further review. Trying to see if Jamari was able to stretch that out and actually pick up the first down. I mean, it looked awfully close from our vantage point. A great second effort there because Anna Fade came in, hit him right away, and then Gilbert fought forward for extra yardage and made this replay worthy. Now I guess the key is going to be when was his knee down when he actually stretched towards the stick? He got loose a little bit from that tackler. But when did his knee go down? We're going to be able to see right here. Oh, you see? Know what? He, yeah. re he reached, he made a guy yeah. those two extra yards. That's a pretty lo long arm reach there, and that could be significant. I don't think there's any question. It's going to be really curious to see. And, of course, you never know how these things end up playing out when you get to the replay booth. There has to be conclusive evidence, and I believe After we're After further review, it. the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was short of the line to gain, fourth down. Well, he needed the 11. And with that extra effort, got close. Certainly on the initial tackle, it was nowhere close. But then that lunge got him close enough and, you know, worth the opportunity. And now another opportunity for Joe Zima. He actually had one go over his head for a safety in the opener against Fresno State. UIW lost that one 66 to nothing. See, that's why I don't like to speculate on these things, because you just never know. <laughs> Chase Coakley back there to return. And he's just going to let this one go harmlessly. But a nice roll. So you can see the distance. Zemo with that Australian-style punt gets the extra rolls and it bounces to the 35-yard line, about where Abilene Christian took over on its first possession. Now we'll see what Adam Seeley does with his second opportunity. Early on in the first quarter, no score in a Southland Conference matchup between UIW and Abilene Christian. On campus here, the University of Incarnate Word first home game in almost a year for UIW and we're five weeks into the season and the home opener for the Cardinals. Back to the 55 yard punt, first and 10 at the 35. Seely escapes all the way across his body and a valiant effort but incomplete for Carl Whitley. Right now let's check in with a third member of our broadcast crew down on the sidelines with Valerie Lopez. Hey Mike, and that you're exactly right. Today is UIW's first D1 home game and the first home game in 317 days. And today is also Fan Appreciation Day. So the first 500 fans were able to get t-shirts and get a decal. And as you can tell right behind me, the fans are all super excited. They're all flooding the stands and they're just super excited and they're really hoping that UIW can get a win here at home. All right, thanks Valerie. And not only a first home game, but first home game is a full Division I FBS member. Chuck, both of these teams, this is an important year. They had that four-year 
not trial period, but the four-year acclimation period to D1 football. And this is an exciting time, both eligible for postseason play. And what a great run here by Tracy James as they gave their quarterback a little breather after Darius drilled him on the last play. Don't catch his breath, maybe massage his ribs in between plays. That was quite a pop on the play on first down. All of our first half replays are brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. When you or your family need help, call Thomas J. Henry 24-7 nights and weekends. That went out to Justin Miller. Interestingly enough, we haven't seen DeAndre Brown, who has been one of their leading rushers over the past few seasons and a team captain. But Tracy James, the sophomore from Dallas, got the start, and he's been in there doing the majority of the work in the backfield. And they're doing a little of this, a little of that right now. They run the play left and swing it out back to the right and make UIW play basically sideline to sideline. And across midfield for the first time for either team as we near the midway point of the first quarter. Better snap it. Seely to the left has Fink. And then he is stood up and wrangled down by Jalen Williams. Dallas Seeley doing a really nice job there, running the play clock all the way down and doing a lot of pre-snap stuff. And that was going to be a big key this week for Adam Doral and his offense. As you can see, it's been a tough sledding here for these guys over the last couple years. But remember, Adam Doral, as a head coach, when he was at Northwest Missouri State, was 1-3 to start his career and then Oh, by the way, went on to win three national championships. So, you know, obviously they're building towards something here, but this guy's resume reads like you would not believe, man. Hall of Fame caliber coaching right now with all the ships he's won up there in Missouri. Tim McCoy, the stop on that tackle. And Doral talked about embracing a, a new challenge. It was very interesting what he said, the, the pressure of having to win every week, every game every week at Northwest Missouri after back-to-back -back national titles. It got to be where that was the only thing he could focus on. And said it was a, kind of a big stress on he, he and his family. Oh, he handled the stress well. <laughs> Seeley out to Whitley, who was able to grab it on the far sideline. And yes, he hauled it in. Yeah, really outstanding throw and catch right there as Abilene Christian now starting to attack downfield. This has been a really nice job. You know, first they pinned him back with the punt get the ball in decent field position, and they're going right down the field now. Outstanding catch by the former Roosevelt star, not only securing the ball, but getting both feet in. And yeah, Whitley missed all of last year with a knee injury. One of their big play threats, though, throughout his career. And here's some space down the right sideline. Deshaun Qualls almost finds his way to the end zone. Qualls, that hybrid receiver running back combo, tore it up in high school. Incredible numbers set a Texas high school record as Markel Cooks just denied him the goal line. State record, 1,000 all-purpose yards. Yeah, Dakota Laws and some of the big beasties up front for AC doing a really nice job pulling on that play. Well, crunch time here for Abilene Christian. Seeley pushing the pile, and he's in for the touchdown. Boy, that was some kind of drive and not a whole lot of resistance right there for UIW. Dallas Seeley marching his team down, and calling his own number here to finish it off. Seeley's first rushing touchdown this season and red zone execution. That was a big point of emphasis for Josh Lamberson, the offensive coordinator. They're only three for nine in the red zone, scoring touchdowns before marching it all the way down from their own 35. And capping it off as Nick Grau's out there. And Grau puts it through. Now second drive works out a little bit better for Abilene Christian, 65 yards, seven to nothing. ACU over UIW. We'll see what the Wildcats have to answer. The one-yard touchdown run from Dallas Seeley, and it's 7-0 Wildcats. The Wildcats on top by seven. An eight-play, 65-yard scoring drive capped off by Dallas Seeley's two-yard quarterback sneak. And all first half scoring summaries are presented by the San Antonio Auto Show, November 9th through the 12th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Yeah. That was drive two, and that worked out a little bit better than drive one for Abilene Christian. Indeed, they were able to run the ball, and then that set up the passing, and they were pretty much perfect doing that as well. Some big plays along the way set up that touchdown. 
Cam Johnson receives the kick. And finds some space, but not much. And let's take a look, Chuck, at the drive that led to that Dallas uh, Seeley two-yard touchdown run. Nice play here to move the defense around and then come back and find a terrific uh, play to Whitley and then Deshaun Qualls down the field. Yeah, I mean, great pitch and catch there to set it all up. And then, again, you're just looking for a little bit of daylight, and he was able to squeak her in for their game's first score. Now, Seeley's got a terrific arm, After 872 over, yards coming into the game. Personal foul, late hit, number 46 of the receiving team. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. First down. That one goes on Philip Higgins of the Cardinals. And unfortunately for UIW, consecutive drives now starting in the shadow of their own end zone. Remember, they started from their own one-yard line. And you're kind of limited on offense when you have to start that deep. You know, you can't show too much, can't be too aggressive, and it pushes them all the way back again. Yeah, and we talked about them wanting to have a little bit of a, you know, a quicker start tonight. I mean, they were down 21 nothing the last time out against Stephen F. and then had to rally. I mean, they're just making it too hard on themselves early in these football games. Mitchell in the backfield. Pass goes to the near sideline. Broken tackle and some extra yardage. Look like Cam Johnson over there. Yeah. Hey, we love these new UIW uniforms, <laughs> man. They're popping. It's just hard to see the numbers sometimes. They do pop. Our old eyes, though. Oh, Takes that's, them getting used that's, to. that's for sure me. I can't speak for you, young man. Nice pitch and catch there by Brophy. And Sean Brophy has the arm. Both coaches talked about it. Larry Kennan mentioned that he throws a pretty good deep ball. And Adam Dorrell said they're going to have to be careful with what Brophy brings to the table. 513 yards passing in the first three games. And right back to him, Johnson dives forward for the catch. Yeah, great pre-snap read there, too. I mean, you could see Abilene Christian taking some chances here in the early going, sending some extra guys to try to put some pressure on the quarterback. Brophy doing a really nice job reading that pre-snap, getting the ball away, and making this a third and manageable play. And talk about your playbook being open to you on this one. Certainly, you can call whatever you want right here. And Abilene Christian's got to try to protect it all. And now they pack it in with Mitchell right to the left of Brophy. Brophy has to just fall on it. Bobbled snap, and he does the wise thing to corral it. But that's an unfortunate break for a third and manageable. Boy, you said it. That errant snap. Snap too hard and way too much to his right. There's just no chance to get on it. And discretion, the better part of Valor there. Just fall on it and punt it away because the last thing you want to do is turn the ball over at that point and not follow the football. And yeah, Royce Moore was right there, one of the team captains on this Abilene Christian defense. Coakley back deep to return again. That's the fifth fumble this year by UIW. Well, they've only lost two. Another good bounce by Zima directionally toward the UIW sideline. And Abilene Christian, their average field position has kind of been at the 35. They'll start in front of the 35-yard line once again as Dallas Seeley gets ready to lead the offense back onto the field. Well, he just marched them at 65 yards down the field. We'll see what Seeley and the offense do when they come back out. Waning minutes of the first quarter, and it's 7-0 Wildcats. Out there to lead the offense. Head coach Larry Kennan watching in the home opener for his team. 16 years as an NFL assistant. Back into the college coaching ranks in 2012. Seeley's got some wheels, and he's going to motor forward close to the first down marker. Boy, a nice safe play there. I mean, lots to look at if you're the UIW defense there. They had two sets of receivers stacked over on the right side. Then they had the running back in motion coming over to the right side. And while everybody's focusing in on that, it's just a little QB keeper. Safe, yet very effective. Makes it second and manageable. Seeley again going to take off. But he can't escape the pressure. Ball on the ground scooped up by Abilene Christian. But you could see that one hanging on the turf for a long time. John Williams in there to pop the ball loose. It looked like Corey Lee was going to have a chance to get this thing. But just a great job by the UIW defense that time. Staying at home, knocking the ball free. and. Boy, their defense needed that play right there. Forced him into third and long, and just what the doctor ordered, especially after giving up a six on the last possession. 
Abilene Christian needs the 47-yard line here on third and very long. Seeley flushed out of the pocket, and he just has to chuck it away. Great defensive possession there for UIW, and another three and out for the Wildcats. Yeah, what was interesting about that formation is typically UIW will play a 3-4 defense, and they only rushed two guys that time. And then when the other defensive lineman came free, his job and only job was to spy the quarterback and make sure he didn't tuck it and run. Yeah, they had a player right there in the middle of the field. Everybody bottled up, and a really good job by the UIW defense. Well, Simon Lerier had a 69-yard punt last time. And he gets this one blocked. Actually takes a pretty nice bounce for a blocked punt. But a great block in there by Tarius there Montgomery. No for running into and the hey, it works out well for the both teams. The ball was tipped. Well, right now, let's go down to the sidelines. Valerie Lopez standing by. Thank you, Mike. This is Coach Adam Durrell's first season with the Wildcats, and he explained to me how he is trying to change the culture, the environment, with the way the players are, how they practice, how they meet. This week, they had it was raining all week in Abilene Christian University, and they had practice, but the boys were still able to push through. They worked on executing plays, the ball control, and Coach Durrell explained how he's just really trying to change the mentality of the boys. Thanks, Valerie. Yeah, a lot of the coaches stress that, that trying to get to know this team. They really wanted to change how things had run, been run in the past. Derek Mitchell on the carry. And Chuck, would you believe that blocked punt still went 30 yards? Yeah, hard to believe. And, and Darius Washington is already having himself a whale of a ball game. He drilled the quarterback on the first possession. And look how big and fast that guy is. Breaking through and then punter was lucky that he didn't extricate his leg from his body. <laughs> I mean, he, he got a lot of it. Montgomery, the red shirt junior out of Baytown, Texas. Had a block kick back in 2016 as well. That's the first punt block this year for the Cardinals. Brophy going to air it out. And over the head of his intended receiver, Philip Baptiste. Now, Brophy has been pretty accurate, but he hasn't thrown for a lot of yards yet. That was just his second incompletion. 18 yards for Brophy on four for six. Yeah, and Adonis Davis doing a really nice job. Number 13 there for Abilene Christian, as you can see. He really, he had the receiver blanketed the whole way and did a really nice job of slowing down, but he still had inside leverage towards the football. So, can't play it any tougher or any better than 13 did right there. And Brophy was asking for perhaps a flag, but maybe some incidental contact. Nice flip out of the backfield to the near sideline. Mitchell powers forward past the first down marker, and there's the size and speed of Derek Mitchell, finally brought down by Bolu Anafe. And just a really good job of play design right there. I mean, you're going to take advantage of Abilene Christian and how aggressive they like to be up front. Look at that. Let a couple guys go through, and they took the bait. And you got some other guys out there on the right side throwing some blocks. Mitchell's able to pick up the first down. Derek Mitchell. Rush for 168 yards against Stephen F. Austin, fifth most in a single game in UIW history. Flip to the near side. And Cam Johnson is wrapped up in another attempt at a stretch back to the line of scrimmage, but on a fade who has been everywhere today, wrapped him up for no gain. Yeah, and that was a real point of emphasis the coaches were telling us this week. I'm just wanting to tackle better. And yeah, they really felt like they took a step back as a program last week with just a lot of missed tackles and not showing up, as Coach Doral would tell us. You know, he says, you can tell when you see a team and how it presents itself, and he really didn't feel like they did that last time out. Well, Anafade should be one of their better tacklers. He wrestled all through high school, <laughs> so I think he'd know how to wrap someone up. Under pressure, but Brophy gets rid of it. Keyshawn Leonard. Yeah, Melvin Brown and Giselle over there as Para. Well. And those numbers. Yeah, but just a good job all around. Talk about Gavin Buford over there as well. I mean, look at all these guys staying home right there. Fool me once, shame on me. Not the second time. Screen pass doesn't work for much right there. No, third and long again for UIW. They need the 35 yard line. They've only converted one third down today, one for four so far only convert 22% of their third downs this season. 
Rofi back over the middle. Gilbert has the catch, and he's still turning. Jamari Gilbert down the right sideline, almost takes it to the house, and he's finally thrown out of bounds. Aeneas Hendricks is the one who finally corralled him out. Hey, if the effort right there doesn't fire you up, I don't know what will. Look at this, Brophy doing a nice job gliding, keeping the play alive. Wasn't the prettiest pass, but got the job done. What a great second and third effort right here by that young man, putting that ball inside the five yard line. 29-yard pass and catch, and really most of the work done by Gilbert, breaking a couple of tackles and getting all the way into the red zone. Mitchell and Raquan Dickens are in the backfield. Best scoring opportunity for UIW. Slant over the middle, caught, and a touchdown. Derek Mitchell came out of the backfield. Pending the extra point, we're tied up here in the first quarter. Just an unbelievable job right there. Was that Mitchell or Lamont Johnson? We've got two number sixes on our scorecard, but our scorecard, but Ball looked like it might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. Great job getting inside leverage right here. It's still making the play. Outstanding job. Jose Perez, a freshman kicker. Has had one block this year, but no problem pushing that one high and through the uprights. And we are tied with the first quarter winding down. UIW marches down the field, 29-yard play to cap it off 59 yards. And it's 7-7 seven to seven in the waning minutes here of the first quarter. And that's something that we kind of expected. These teams would be very balanced, and it just looked like the Cardinals, after kind of figuring out what Abilene Christian would do, made the adjustment. Well, again, you know, as bad as last week was, or the last time out, I should say, when they played two weeks ago against Stephen F., they were down 21 nothing early, but they, that offense really played like a house on fire in the second half. I mean, they went right up and down the field a bunch of times on Stephen F. And again, as tough a loss as that was, Coach Kennan really felt like he learned a lot about his team just for fighting back. You know, the first couple of games didn't go their way. They're playing up, you know, playing Fresno State, and had to go play Sac State out west. And you take a long bus trip out to Stephen F., and you're getting stroked in the first half 21 nothing, but... You come out and really do your thing in the second half of that game and, you know, kind of give yourself something to build on for this ball game here. And then again, you know, you start off this game, it doesn't go your way to begin with, but nice answer there to get this game to within seven to six. Well, final seconds here of the first quarter, and Deshaun Qualls is back to receive. Busts it to the near side, turns the corner, and Qualls goes head first into the kicker. A good field position for Abilene Christian with one second left in the first quarter. Yeah, and that's been the refrain for this entire first quarter, is Abilene Christian having decent field position. And there's UIW's chance right there. You know, you finally get a score, so you get to kick the ball off. You get a chance to pin them down, maybe put some pressure on them defensively, and to give up a big return to start a game or to start the drive. Yeah, it has felt like Dallas Seeley has worn down that 35-yard line on all four of Abilene Christian's drives tonight. So they start again in good position. James the handoff. Acceleration into the second line and thrown forward across midfield. Markel Cooks led the charge. And that'll be it for the first quarter. So teams feeling each other out and then back and forth scoring drives after one. Abilene Christian leads seven to six here on the Citywide Sports Network. A back and forth first quarter, a balanced first quarter. UIW with 75 yards of total offense. Abilene Christian with 70. And the only difference, that missed extra point by the Cardinals. And just for clarification, Scoring the last touchdown was Derek Mitchell, the running back, even though he was lined up outside. Seeley's got a receiver, and he hauls it in to Sean Qualls into the end zone. Troy Grant, rather, into the end zone. On a terrific pass on the, on the fake, and then Seeley aired it out, and Grant, the deep threat, went yeah. right down the middle. 6'2", 195 pounds, and obviously with speed to burn. Look at this, the fake pitch. They can't get home with the pressure on the quarterback, and my goodness, Troy Grant had two yards of room there between he and the defender. 
even more athletically diving for the end zone in the back end of that. So a quick strike for Abilene Christian, and once again taking advantage of the good field position. Yeah, one play into the second quarter, eight seconds into the second quarter, and the Wildcats are on top. Grant originally committed to Southern Miss, and you can see he's got that FBS speed there. And also had a big game last year against the Cardinals. Two touchdowns and 71 yards back in 2016. We had a lot of guys going deep on that play. Again, faking the pitch. and but The only thing that could stop him was the turf. Yeah, it looks like they're going to see if Grant fell just short of the end zone. His momentum certainly carried him in, but obviously in college when you're down, you're down. Don't have to be touched. Uh, make the long run to check this one out. And as it always seems to happen, that touchdown happens all the way on the opposite side of where the referees go to review the play. So a nice work out there for the officials. And we'll wait and see. Uh, it's a great pitch and catch, and Abilene Christian's going to have terrific field position regardless. That elbow, though, that elbow is very close. Oh, if I was a guessing man, I would say touchdown, and they got it right on the field. So, but we'll see. I mean, you never know. Like you're not going to put yourself out there, though, right? Because then if you're wrong. Well, yeah. there's always that as well. I don't mind putting myself out there. It's just I can't tell you how many replays I've watched in my lifetime. Thought I saw one thing and got another. So <laughs> we'll just see what they have to say. Chuck, indisputable video evidence. I sure look like he scored to me. So I was going to say, I don't think there is. <laughs> because I don't really have any idea right now. Looks like it's almost instantaneous where the elbow and the ball cross. And at this point, since it's ruled touchdown, yeah, I'm not going to say you can't overrule it, but it would be difficult to overrule this. Well, just a really good throw there to start this thing off. I mean, it's not ever easy trying to throw flat-footed when you've got defenders barreling in on both sides. Just another great route, too. After further review, the runner was short of the goal. His elbow was dead. The ball be half yard line. First and goal, position number four. Both game clock and play clock will start on my signal. See, bro, I'd be Chuck, over let's two. Let's just not speak. We, uh, would, we would just won't talk for two. <laughs> well, the elbow does hit. And yeah, that's a good view right there. So the officials, obviously, yeah. they saw that angle just short. And Abilene Christian's touchdown taken off the board, but terrific field position inside the one-yard line on the opening drive of the second quarter. Surprisingly enough, Abilene Christian hasn't won a road conference game since 2014. Final game of the 2014 season, their last road win. And you think they mentioned that to these guys this week? Yeah, I think they did. They come out of here with a lot of fire, that's for sure. Seeley keeps it himself, and a replica of touchdown drive number one. Seeley punches it in, and now the Wildcats are on the board to extend the lead. It's all right to be a ball hog if, you're, if you can finish him off, right? The, the vulture, they call that. The other guy does all the work. You know, Grant gets all the way down there, and then Seeley steals the touchdown. <laughs> right. So Dallas Seeley's got two rushing touchdowns for a total of three yards, and it's 13-6 to six, Abilene Christian. Nick Grau back on to attempt an extra point. Grau, one of the best kickers in Abilene Christian history. First team all-conference last year. And he puts this one through. Yeah, we were watching him warm up before the game, and he was routinely knocking him down from 52. But this is one of those things I think Coach Cannon's really going to be irritated with because that was one of the points that they really wanted to focus in for this particular ball game. He felt like there were way too many balls going over their DB's heads and they were getting beat deep, giving up some big plays. And boy, those big explosive plays will just break your back when you're a defense, you know? You think you got everything bottled up and then somebody hits you with a deep ball. And it's happened a lot this year and it's kind of been reflected on the wins and losses so far. 113 yards passing now for Dallas Seeley. And you can see how having that, that good calming presence at quarterback has helped out Abilene Christian. That is something that, you know, we asked Coach Doral about and their offensive coordinator, Lamberson, and they said he, he's got so much potential, he's just still kind of figure it out a little bit. Scoring summary brought to you by the San Antonio Auto and Truck Show. 
Three plays, 52 yards, and that one-yard touchdown rush by Dallas Seeley. I would have given it to Grant, though, for the touchdown. Yeah, rush. I would have, too. But, I mean, the refs clearly got it right, and we need to get our eyes checked. But right. I think the biggest thing was elapsed time, 44 seconds. I mean, you gotta got to be a little better than that. Kick fielded at the goal line by Gilbert. And he plows forward to the center of the field just across the 25-yard line. The second quarter of CSN football is presented by the San Antonio Express News, bringing you the real facts since 1865. Gilbert had that big play for UIW on offense, the 29-yard completion. Tremendous athleticism. This is a guy, a senior, he was their leading receiver last year. And he's also on the track team, very fast. Ran a 4-3-40. And when he broke free of that tackle, it looked like he was about to break it early. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that gets you invited to an NFL camp at some point. Raquan Dickens is now in the backfield alongside Brophy. Over the middle, first down catch. Okay, just across the 37-yard line. Zaire Andre. Another one of those FBS transfers, played at Washington State in 2014, and spent the last two seasons at El Camino College, just seven miles from his hometown of Inglewood, California. Yeah, and Abilene Christian just playing a little soft zone right there and trying to keep everything in front of them, and good job by UIW there to get a quick first down for themselves. I've seen Brophy really start to open it up a little bit since that four for five, 18-yard start. Last two completions have been over 10 yards. Mitchell probing, got the initial line, still on his feet. Then forward progress ruled down. And he's knocked back close to the line of scrimmage. And yeah, I think that was Raquan Dickens as they shuffle some guys in and out of the lineup here. But Abilene Christian doing a really nice job right there of kind of dirtying up the box that time to stop the run. And UIW was barely able to get that ball a yard. And on Datrion that particular play. Dean was the one who made the, uh, the tackle. That's another major transfer from Arkansas. Didn't play last year. Brophy under pressure, able to escape, good block, and then flings it away towards his own sideline. But the way he twirled around out of pressure, impressive. There is no foul for intentional grounding. And then the he got up a bit outside the tackle box, and the ball crossed the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Brophy doing a really nice job of feeling the pressure. I mean, because he did the little play fake. And then before he knows it, look at that. He saw that out of the back of his eye. And ran away from the blitzer, did everything right, just didn't complete the throw. Yeah, Poye and Dean, the two ends bringing the pressure. This Abilene Christian defense, very good. Third best in the conference. Allows just over 200 yards passing this season. Brophy with time, airing it out down the left sideline. And the leaping grab pulled in, but out of bounds by Philip Baptiste. Good haul. Good haul, and again, Adonis Davis has really showed up early in this football game. He was stride for stride with the receiver. Really, Brophy could really only do one thing, and that's put it on his left shoulder, which is exactly what he did. Just led him a little too far, but as you saw, 13 right there. Chase Coakley back to receive again for Abilene Christian. And Joe Zima has had a few punts over 40 yards today. Averages 47 yards per punt this season. Got that one off clean. Coakley with space. And tackled across the 30 yard line into his own sideline. Abilene Christian will have a chance to extend the lead. Adam Garza made the tackle. That's a 50-yard punt by Zima, his 10th this year of over 50 yards. And the Wildcats will trot out Dallas Seeley back out there, 14-7, early on in the second quarter here on the Citywide Sports Network. For UIW, fans maybe tuning out, the young fan there are tuning in, hopefully not to us, looks like that kid was doing something else to entertain himself. But nice to see the Cardinals back here on campus. It's been a long time since they're back here. Coming up at halftime, we will speak with President Dr. Thomas F. Emmons, the UIW president. Valerie Lopez will bring us the Sports Tonight Halftime Show. San Antonio's only nightly sportscast, 10 p.m. right here on KCWX-TV. 
You can see the overall philosophy of this Abilene Christian football team. It's been a lot different with this offense under Josh Lamberson, who's also a first-year coordinator who came here with Coach Doral. And they said in the past, these guys, they were a spread you out kind of team, chuck and duck all over the place, but they want to be able to run the football all the time if they can. I mean, their head coach is a former offensive lineman, for Christ's sakes. James in the backfield. And a pass out to the near sideline. Kalen Sadler gains a couple. UIW defense stout on the edge. Jawan Giles, 16th tackle of the season. And he has the only interception this season for UIW. The Cardinals have only picked off one pass. And Dallas Seeley almost threw one earlier. He's thrown six interceptions this year to go along with three touchdown passes. He's off to a hot start tonight. Tracy James still in the backfield. We have not seen senior DeAndre Brown just yet. Their 11th leading rusher in program history. Seely in trouble and able to get bear hugged by one of his linemen to keep him from going even further out of bounds. Dante Hibbert gives the big bear hug. And that's the friendly benefit you get going into your own sideline. I don't think they'd be as friendly on the opposite side. Well, when you're Dante Hibbert, number 92, and you're 6'4", 340 pounds, when people hit you, they tend to probably stop. <laughs> this is a large, large man. He stands he's actually up. Getting, he's actually getting some attention down there, so Dallas Seeley may have inflicted the blow. James to the right edge, and dives close to the first down marker. And again, the basis for what they want to do now with this new coaching staff is still run the football. And it's been a little bit of a work in progress. They like all three of the guys that they've got back there running it. They've had some success here tonight doing exactly that. But again, they're still going to make their hay oftentimes because they've got so many threats outside. We've seen some of that already on display. Five's already got himself a long catch and set up one touchdown. And Seeley's been kind of impressive when he's been able to move the pocket. But that's been their bread and butter. Have him dive forward beneath that big offensive line and push for the first. Leading the way, center Bill Weber, 6'5", 300. They have that big, tall option and just duck behind. And I wouldn't mind that, just falling forward beneath the big 6'5", center. Another drive by Abilene Christian here. They're cooking up here in the second quarter. Yeah, the Wildcats have... Kind of controlled the clock here in the second quarter. Still early going, 14 to six. After UIW scored a touchdown, the Wildcats answered right back. Long ball over the middle, and that one's hauled in by Deshaun Qualls. How about that laser beam? Mercy. What a great job standing in the pocket. First of all, he's got to find the ears, which he did. It was an errant snap. Down to his left, we've seen a couple of those tonight in this ball game. But Dallas Seeley doing a really nice job stepping up in the pocket and just throwing a missile out there on point. Now this is a guy that did have 10 games of over 300 passing yards last season. And he's got 154 yards now. Ball is going to take it again. And then the ball's loose. It looked like he was down. And the officials immediately motioning that he was down to Sean Qualls after he sprinted around left end. He's doing a really nice job blocking out there too. Some of his wide receivers getting in the ass. Josh Fink doing a really nice job out there throwing some blocks. Yeah, Jawan Giles was the one who almost dove on that loose ball. But Qualls was marked down. He was a quarterback in high school, Deshaun Qualls. Yeah, and that ball was clearly out. So they were lucky the ball got kicked right into the guy that was trying to catch it. Now here's where Abilene Christian has struggled. Look at this season, three for nine, but as you can see, two for three tonight. That's been the difference so far. Seeley on the keeper, and he finds open space into the end zone. Dallas Seeley has all three rushing touchdowns tonight. The 13-yard scamper gives ACU 20 points. Yeah, a little RPO action there, and it was the parting of the Red Sea. Everybody going with the ball carrier. And if you don't stay home, this is what you get. 
Ball carrier not contact until he got to the line of scrimmage. He was able to score it again. That's impressive. That's on the quarterback, too, right? You have to make that read and know if the edge is going to collapse. So an impressive play there by Seeley to make the call and yank it back. Extra point right down the middle. And the Wildcats back-to-back -back scoring drives. And they've started to kind of pull away a little bit. 21-6, Abilene Christian. Eight plays, 68 yards, and they march down the field. Now Abilene Christian looking for their first road win in over two seasons. Looking strong now, early on in the second quarter. Not back-to-back -back scoring drives. And early on through the first or second quarter, Dallas Seeley puts him in front. Eight plays, 68-yard drive. Seeley's 13-yard rush caps it off. He's got all three touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns for the quarterback. Desmond Height back to receive and has some space. Dancing over a tackler, and UIW is going to have their best field position to start the game. As Quincy Dunn finally makes the tackle, but Height hopped over a few. And gives UIW a good position. Now, the South Conference standings are presented by MySA.com, the largest voice in South Texas for over 150 years. We talked about how this is a critical game. Both of these teams, one loss in conference, the loss to Stephen F. Austin for both. And for UIW, the schedule gets a lot tougher. They're going to have to play Sam Houston State and Central Arkansas here in the next few weeks, two nationally ranked teams. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing easy about this conference. That is for sure. I mean, you know, Sam Houston State's been doing it for an awful long time. So is Central Arkansas. Number three team in the nation right now. Derek Mitchell tried to dance around a tackle, but a big defensive surge by Mekani Poye and Jack Gibbons. And that's the thing about UIW trying to build this program, as you see ACU covering up this run very nicely. I mean, it's about trying to take what was a Division II team and then move them up into a really good FCS conference. Hasn't been easy, but, you know, last time they played, Stephen F. was a prime example. They didn't win the football game, but they're closing the gap on these teams and physically able to play with them toe-to-toe -to -toe, as opposed to what was going on here early on. Pass close to the marker, then ripped away and down in the hands of Abilene Christian. Jamar Mack has it, dancing out of traffic. And Mack's got some space. And the unfortunate break against UIW, that one ripped, popped right into the hands of Mack. And Abilene Christian forces the game's first turnover. Injured player down as well after the play for the Cardinals. On the near sideline. Jamari Gilbert, he gets up and now will limp slowly back towards his sideline. Now here's the interesting thing. I didn't know if it was going to be a completion, but then it popped up and didn't matter. went right into the Wildcats' hands. Well, I mean, that's what a good defense will do. I mean, they already had this play stopped for only a short gain anyway. Ball comes out. Receiver has it. Makes a football move. And... And I'll tell you what, 13 is having himself a ball game tonight. Adonis Davis, you keep saying his name, he has been everywhere. Handful of tackles and had the rip right there. Mack was just in good position, popped right to him, but Davis did all the hard work. Yeah, just a great job of attacking the football. You know, you got a chance to make a tackle on a guy, and while you're there, why not try to strip him? That's the sixth fumble this year by UIW. Seeley back out there running the offense. Tracy James powers forward for a few. You can tell why it's so hard to throw on these guys. I mean, their corners have done a really nice job all year long, and I know this is my chance, my first chance to see these guys play live in person, and they're just doing a really nice job because UIW's got some really talented, explosive players outside. Five carries for James. Still no sign of DeAndre Brown, their team captain, but he has been oft injured. Might be nursing something still. Seeley moving the pocket to the end zone. And a diving, well, no signal yet. Diving catch made over there. Grant saying, I got it. And finally, a touchdown call. Troy Grant with a diving snag. The officials had to make sure he came up with it. But it's a touchdown pass from Seeley to Grant. And it's 27-6. to Well, you know, he can beat you outside or deep. We've already seen that once. And then just running and out. And what a dime. Dallas Seeley put right there. Mercy. I mean, right on the cone. 
his guy catches it or nobody catches it. Able to get the punch. And that's the second terrific catch by Troy Grant. Two catches, 76 yards, and now a touchdown. Nearly replicating what he did last year against UIW. Now we've seen him make some throws. Dallas Seeley in the pocket. We've seen him make throws on the run. Man, he's having a really quick start to this football game, to say the least. Three rushing touchdowns and a TD pass to go along with it. As ACU is now taking a 28-6 lead here in the second quarter on the Citywide Sports Network. Abilene Christian has scored on its last three possessions. Now 28-6, Wildcats edge. Chuck, probably a, a critical drive here for UIW. They're in danger of kind of getting run off their own field. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any question. I mean, you want to be able to send these guys back a message because Abilene Christian right now is on a roll. And, you know, kudos to them. They talked about it all week where they wanted to make sure that they were able to match the physicality of UIW. I mean, the, you, the ACU coaches marveled looking at the game tape, despite the record, how UIW fought, especially up front on both lines, and they were really impressed with that. And that was a point of emphasis all week for Abilene, Abilene Christian is to come out here and just match their toughness. And so far, you'd have to say they've been doing that because they are pretty much having their way here in the second quarter. You know, the Wildcats were worried about with UIW. Remember, the Cardinals had a bye week last week. They were worried about schematically what they would draw up, about the extra week of rest. And maybe we haven't seen the full array yet. But UIW certainly might have some trickery left in the playbook after being off the past week. And the airside caught by Mitchell. And then he is stood up. And a host of white jerseys wrap him up and throw him down, led by Gavin Burford. You know, a really good job by Mitchell out there on the flat, threw a couple jukes and was able to turn that up at least a little bit. Like it wasn't going to get very far, and indeed it did not, but he did well just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Brophy has thrown the ball a lot tonight, 10 for 14, but just 74 yards passing. And the Wildcats have taken away pretty much anything downfield and have forced him to those secondary options. Here they come. Quick pass by Brophy and a good read. Just couldn't haul it in by Cam Johnson. You've got to make that play for your guy, too. I mean, he's got guys that are pretty much a jailbreak on the ACU side. Pretty good throw. You've got to be able to make that play, help your guy out right there. One for six on third downs for UIW. And they were just 11 for 50 coming into this game. Now here's a big one, third and long. They need the 36 yard line. Brophy over the middle, caught by Andre, but wrapped up immediately. And taken down by Brandon Richmond. Abilene Christian doing a really nice job disguising their defense right there. And a lot of guys in the box to start the formation, and then three guys drop back. Nobody could get open, so the throw's got to come underneath and not even close to picking up the first down. Outstanding tackle right there by Brandon Richmond. That's something their defensive coordinator, Tremaine Johnson, you mentioned earlier, stressed. They want to have a renewed emphasis on tackling. Pressure coming, and it's a block. Second block kick we've seen today. Zima took the big hit, but it was clean. Eric Hume there is no foul for running with into the, the block. Kicker. Abilene Christian's the second blocked. block kick this season. And Eric Hume's already had a nice night on special teams, too. And I remember this young man from Steele High School right here in San Antonio, the pride of Steele High School. Yeah, great to see Hume playing. He never saw the field at Texas. Was at UT for four years. and. Missed all his playing time with a series of injuries, including the ACL injury he suffered in high school. But look at him sprinting over the pile and getting the hand on that one. Oh, that's lovely. Just a great job splitting the double team there. Look at this. That's elevation. That's just, you know, and the guy looks the part too, man. 6'3", 200 pounds, super athletic. Well, another drive and another opportunity. Abilene Christian takes over in great field position. 
Seely running for his life, escapes and gets it out to Grant. Grant takes it down inside the 10 yard line. We cannot say enough about the job of Dallas Seely there. You know, we were talking to their coaches this week and they said, you know, he's not super athletic, but he's athletic enough. And that's just a great play right there. I mean, feeling the pressure and just doing enough with your feet in order to extend the play and then get the ball downfield. 14 yard reception by Grant. Dallas Seeley now nearing 200 yards passing. Hand off to James through the middle. And stop just short of the first down marker. Might have driven the pile close to it. But Abilene Christian has scored in their last three drives. And Chuck, they had terrific field position after the fumble. Now terrific field position again. Really, it's a tough task to ask out of the Cardinals' defense. Well, you see where all three phases come into these football games. I mean, because if your defense is forcing three and outs, then you're blocking punts, or you get a nice kick return, you're setting your offense up in pretty good shape with these drives. And so far, they've capitalized on darn near every one of them. James has space, and James into the end zone. It's the fourth rushing touchdown of the game for Abilene Christian. James from six yards out. And now 34 to six. And just a great kick out block by Trice Prince, who came over from his linebacking spot to come out there in the backfield and just be a big body out there. Look at these guys, just destroying Fellas at the point of impact, clearing a path, and another rushing touchdown for Abilene Christian. Remember, this was a 7-6 ball game after UIW marched down the field, missed the extra point that would have tied it. But since then, and since the second quarter, all Abilene Christian. Wildcats have scored on all three of their drives here in the second quarter. With the second quarter winding down, it's Abilene Christian 35, UIW 6, here on the Citywide Sports Network. 5-6, to six, Abilene Christian, Southland Conference matchup. And tonight's Southland Conference NCAA scoreboard is brought to you by Sports Tonight, your local go-to source for sports. Watch it tonight at 10 on KCWX. We'll get to those scores in a second after this kick. A lot of good action going on in the Southland Conference. Short squib kick, and it's bobbled. But the Cardinals have it. Desmond Height looked like he didn't expect they wanted to take this short hop. But he's able to crowd. So here's the Southland Conference scoreboard brought to you by Sports Tonight. There's the big game, the two teams ranked in the top 15. Central Arkansas leads Sam Houston State 21-7. Another top 25 team, McNeese, up on Stephen F. Austin, 21 to nothing. Those are two teams that Abilene Christian has to end the season with. They play Sam Houston State and then Central Arkansas. Not enviable to end with those two. No, and especially with the reign of terror that Sam Houston State has had in this conference for many, many years. The first and 10 for Brophy and the Cardinals. Handoff goes to Mitchell, gets into the second line. We can see a little brief chunk of what makes Derek Mitchell so good. It has been bottled up a lot, but Mitchell has that Big 10 speed and size. Eric Hume makes the tackle. Yeah, obviously one of those guys when he got to campus kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. 6-1, pushing two bills. Now the Cardinals are glad that he ended up on their doorstep. Graduated from Iowa too, so getting it done with the books. Mitchell again. Well, he's been kept in check, and there's Hewn once more. We've got to be able to get the ball downfield a little bit here and loosen some things up, but it has been tough sledding overall for UIW so far in this football game, at least on offense. Got to try to see if he can pick up these sticks here and get this ball rolling back in your direction again. Man, Brophy has aired it out 17 attempts already, and he has just been kept in check. There's been nothing past 10 yards. You don't need that though. Line of scrimmage and a first down marker very close. Just need the 36. Tipped, tangled, and intercepted. 
by Sam Denmark. Haven't mentioned his name yet, but the senior leads this team. Two-time Southland Conference selection. It was intended for Gilbert and Denmark, the interception. And, and Brophy, yeah, I was going to say, Brophy has some words to the official. His receiver, Gilbert, was just tied up before that pick. Now that's one of those two. The coverage was pretty good, at least on that clip right there. Defender just doing a really nice job of breaking through and getting his hand on that football. It's just, it's tough to squeeze a ball into that tight a window. Sam Denmark gets the easy deflection and makes the most of it. I led the league in tackles two years ago, second in the league last year. He really has embodied what it means to be a student athlete at Abilene Christian. There's a quick sling out to Carl Whitley. You see the strange arm angle for Seeley. He was getting popped, but still got it downfield. Yeah, really nice job under duress. I mean, that's about all you can ask for from your guy. I mean, he's getting smashed. Waited out there kind of sidearm action, and tell you what, Whitley catches that one. He's not stopping until he has to. Now the turnover battle going the way of Abilene Christian. A fumble, an interception, and a block punt for the Wildcats. Sealy to the far side. Fink has it, and he's dancing his way to the right sideline. Josh Fink all the way down inside the five. Jalen Williams made the tackle. Fink's a sophomore. Had 86 yards receiving last year against the Cardinals, and that's his first reception today. Yeah, and you know, a play like that doesn't happen unless you get superior blocking out front. And Abilene Christian, look at this. I mean, it's textbook. They got three guys out there. Offense. Oh, maybe Number a little 19. too textbook. <laughs> Ten yard penalty maybe that's why he had so much foul. room. Okay. Second down. You see the back end of this, but obviously the hold happened way before that. Oh, just uh, I was about ready to give some guys some love. Yeah. That's what happens. Every time we try to say something, the opposite happens <laughs> That's tonight. exactly right. Still a nice run by Fink, though, to, to make something happen after that short catch. Now, he, he dances through traffic well, but, yeah, you, you can see Cam Knight just got locked up. And that's the obvious call right there. Yeah, you get your hands up that high and you got Jersey. They're going to be able to see that one pretty easily. But all these pre-snap looks kind of change a pace offense. That's something that Josh Lamberson, their first-year offensive coordinator, talked about, that they will come to the line and then they will look back to the sideline. And the sideline will maybe indicate based on the defensive formation. They're trying to work a mismatch based on the formation they see out there. And you have to say so far it's worked out for Abilene Christian. Quick shovel ahead. Miller has space. Justin Miller. And a big stiff arm. So they got it all back. You know, what's interesting is they've gone to this play several times tonight, and every single time something good has happened, and obviously that was the best of the bunch there. But play keeps working. I love when an offensive coordinator goes back to it. I mean, it's nice to show the other team a bunch of different plays, but... Looks like this one might be coming yeah, say, back Let me as put well. an asterisk on they got it all back because then they committed another penalty. Holding offense, number 15. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, second down. Cody Ennis, that's a San Antonio native. Yeah, former Madison quarterback. Could not be Cody Ennis. We know that kid. He does not do those kinds of things. But 20 yards and penalties on the past two plays. And all of a sudden, push back nearly to midfield. I'll tell you what, and if you guys remember, number 15, Cody Ennis, right here, top of your screen. Looks like the other guy's engaging him as well. And you see the jersey grab a little bit at the end. They always get the second guy, right? But I'll tell you what, Cody Ennis has put on look like 20 pounds of muscle since his days at Madison as the quarterback. Nothing for Seeley, dancing around and flips it out ahead for a completion. Right on cue, Cody Ennis. Oh. You know, Seeley, a little Brett Favre action there, just get it out however possible. That's exactly the way it was. I mean, look, his eyes never leave downfield, and then he's about to get obliterated and I think he nice shot that. shovel pass. Yeah, I think he shot that. There was some follow through. Oh, Time whatever out. works, it's a forward pass. Evelyn Christian, this is their first charge team timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. 
There he is, Cody Ennis. Yeah, 270, was he that big in high school? Negative. He was a big boy in high school, no question. Took Madison all the way to what? The quarterfinals that year. I think it was head coach Jim Streety's last game. Boy, that was a whale of a ball game. Our okay. man Derek Machen, our statistician, middle linebacker for the Mavs back in the day. Well, coming up at halftime, Valerie Lopez will bring us the Sports Tonight Halftime Show, San Antonio's only nightly sportscast, 10 p.m. right here on KCWX-TV. Yeah, Cody's all grown up and don't want to be running into him in an alley somewhere unless he's on your team. <laughs> You know, his dad actually played basketball here at UI. Really? So there's a little interesting connection here. Who, who's, who do you think dad's rooting for tonight? Well, obviously his son. Pull for the kid, man. Got, the, got the UIW on underneath, maybe. Basketball alone. Pass to the far sideline. Miller at space. And then Dallas Seeley down behind the play. He took a big wallop. To Marcus Williams. It's over there to make the tackle. But Tracy James had to help up his quarterback, Dallas Seeley, who stayed down for about five seconds after the play. We're going to want to do a little dive play here and just let him catch his breath after he got his chest massaged. Maybe get a little sauce with those ribs, man. Or a timeout time time to give him some breathing. Room. Christian. So second this is time a out. second charge team timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. You see the first out that that young man's having. <laughs> Show him the 15 for 19 in the touch. He's also got three rushing touchdowns. So you do a little everything but drive the bus so far in this first half. Now their best play on fourth down has been just line Sealy up and send him underneath the center. But yeah, do you want him to get that kind of punishment right after that big hit? Well, with a minute 15 left, give him the breather, chance to draw up a play. We'll see what Abilene Christian can do. They have lived in this half of the field this second quarter. Remember, they, they had the ball, they switched after one play to end the first, and then since then they've been on this left side of the field. Abilene really Christian will not be charged to timeout since the play clock was not reset. Oh, that's another yeah. break, too, especially if they go for it here on fourth down. Like you said, when it's your night, it's your night sometimes. So free timeout, free huddle. And a fourth and two coming up. Quick toss. It goes to Whitley. Flag on the play, but Whitley's still going. He's got open space down the left sideline. And Carl Whitley is going to have a nice touchdown run, but there is a flag on the play, and it came out early. Now it might negate the first touchdown back in his hometown this year for Carl Whitley. He's had some big plays against UIW in the past. Personal foul, chop block, number 76 and 57. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, fourth down. Oh, well, that's costly. Takes away the fourth down conversion, and this drive alone, Abilene Christian has committed 35 yards worth of penalties. Well, there's no question that that was a chop block right there on the right side. So good call by the officials. And a huge break for UIW because, man, you're already down on this scoreboard 35 to 6, and you've got a team that's going for it on fourth and two on their end. That's rough. Man. You catch the break there, or caught a break there, I should say, and then you're going to have to punt it this time for sure. Yeah, the Wildcats only had one penalty coming into this drive, and now three on the drive alone. And three big gainers, too. That punt almost got blocked. We've seen a couple of block kicks tonight. Directionally angled down low, and... Cannot be corralled before it goes into the end zone. Wildcats did down one earlier at the one-yard line, but at that time just got past the outstretched arms and into the end zone. 44-yard punt by Simon Larrier. All right, we'll see if UIW can get something going here with 54 seconds left in the first half. And again, you know, the last time out when they played two weeks ago against Stephen F., they were getting their clocks cleaned at half, 21-0, and came back and made that a football game and had the ball in the last possession in a tie game just... 
Things didn't go their way at the end of that ball game. Had a play go awry and had a pick six basically for a walk-off loss, but you know, they have come back in that. Brophy fakes the pitch, screen set up. And dancing to the far sideline, close to the first down marker. Eric Hune has been flying all over the ball tonight. Got in on the tackle to keep Mitchell short of the first down. But they're not in really in much hurry. 25 seconds left and counting. Yeah, it's one of those plays, too. I mean, the biggest thing is you got to make sure that the other team doesn't get the ball back here. So you're hoping you can get a little play that gets you something going. But if you don't, you know, you'll talk about it at halftime and see if you can't regroup. Could be the final snap of the first half. And it's Mitchell driving the pile forward. But UIW in no hurry. And Abilene Christian is going to turn to the locker room, as will the Wildcats. 28 unanswered points by the Wildcats to turn a 7-6 ball game into 35-6. And so far, it has been the road Wildcats, 1-3 on the season, who have started to exert their will a little bit so far. But big home opener opportunity for UIW. We'll see how they respond in the second half. As Chuck mentioned, they were down 21 nothing. They came back. Will the play clock operator please play attention? Good comeback. But we are about to go to halftime. And right now, let's go down to the field. Valerie Lopez standing by with Adam Doral. Thank you, guys. OK, coach, first half, five touchdowns, two turnovers for the defense, and a blocked kick by the special teams. How are you feeling right now? I, I feel great. I'm, I'm proud of our players because what a difference a week makes. Uh, just with the energy and the passion we're playing with. We didn't do that last week. Uh, I'm really proud of our guys for getting refocused. Obviously, we got a, a two quarters of football left, but uh, I'm just really proud of their effort and their passion right now. And it seems that ACU has controlled the momentum in the first half. What do you intend on keeping to keep the same momentum coming back out for the second half? Yeah, we need to stay really balanced on offense. We're being able to run the football right now, which we haven't been able to do a lot this year. Uh, our screen game's been good. And then just our deep play action pass. And then defensively, we're stopping the running back, and he's a really good player. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. All right, thanks, Valerie, but Valerie's not going to go anywhere. Coming up next, the Sports Tonight Halftime Show with Valerie Lopez. We're underway in halftime, and we'll have our full halftime coverage after this. 35-6, to Abilene Christian after the first half. Both teams back out there. Abilene Christian finished on a tear. 28 unanswered points after it was 7-6. to six. I know we talked through the, the first half numbers, but Chuck, let, let's hammer down on that passing yard again. 249 yards passing for the Wildcats. Just 84 before we get in, into more of those. Let's go back down to Valerie. She's with Coach Kennan. Coach Kennan, ACU offense has scored 35 points on your defense. What changes need to be made in the second half for you to have to come back? It, it looked to me like we were playing half speed and they were playing full speed. And it, it really kind of reminded me of a Laurel and Hardy comedy routine. We got to start playing full speed and, and play. They're not doing anything except we're just not reacting well. We, we just got to start playing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach, and good luck. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Valerie. Well, that, that was interesting. That's kind of what we talked about as well. Well, you know, I think, you know, you trust your eyes. That's what I was always told. And... You know, I liked everything he had to say, including the Laurel and Hardy reference, so I think <laughs> I might be the only one that gets that. But, again, it's it's one of those things where you got to play with some passion. you got to play with some fight. I mean, this is your home opener. I know the last time you played was a tough loss and not the way you want to do it, but you got to turn the page, and let's see if they can build on something here to start the third quarter. Qualls gets it. Nice deep kick, though, and he won't have anywhere to run. But Abilene Christian will have it again to start the second half. And as I mentioned, 249 yards passing. Dallas Seeley has rushed for three touchdowns and passed for another. And he's over 200 yards passing in the first half. Yeah, and really Sean Brophy, I didn't think played a bad first half either. He just got to get a little more help out yeah, there. And that last interception wasn't very good. I mean, he threw it in a tight space. But, you know, at that point, you're trying to make a play for your team. And I can see where your eyes get a little big. You know, you want to try to force something or make something happen. But... Dallas Seeley darn near perfect in the first frame. 
16 for 20. And yeah, Brophy wasn't bad. 13 for 19, just doesn't have the yardage. Only 84 yards passing. James has space, and then he's spun down after a gain of five. Close to the 30-yard line. Well, tonight's third quarter of CSN football is brought to you by Ruth's Chris Steakhouse with three locations in San Antonio. And Dryas Montgomery making a play there. I thought, you know, he had a pretty darn good first half as well. Now Montgomery was the one who got back there on the block kick, or the block punt that UIW had. That was really the defensive highlight. Sean Qualls now back, split out to the left side. Seely airs it out wide open. Josh Fink breaks a tackle. He's across midfield, and Fink, the big gainer, down to the 40-yard line. Quandre Washington finally made the tackle, but there's that pump fake on a play that was there earlier, and then UIW goes and bites on it. They did, and they're just playing a little bit too soft back there. And an easy throw and another set of downs for Abilene Christian as they come out just like they started the last half on fire. Yeah, 29-yard pass completion by Dallas Seeley. And now he's 17 for 21. Seeley fakes a couple of handoffs. Has to escape Montgomery. And then chucks it out of harm's way. Sean Qualls is the intended receiver. Well, tonight's second half scoreboard is sponsored by Atlas Floors Carpet One, making homes beautiful since 1948. Really good defense that time by UIW. I mean, that's not an easy play when, you know, the quarterback's out there scrambling and his safety valve decides to release and go downfield, but they had great coverage downfield. Able to knock that play and stuff it cold. And that's a three-man front, too. Their base defense is 3-4. Still got that pressure. Was Sean Washington into the game for the first time. Hops over a tackle. That's a guy that Adam Doral mentioned might see some more time. At four carries for 12 yards at Colorado State. And now Washington starts the second half with a big carry. Yeah, a little trap. Got a couple guys pulling. And wow, guys up front doing a really nice job. For Abilene Christian, I mean, Riken, Etuk, Weber, Weldy, and, Ma and Laws. Meldian Laws, I should say, all doing the job up front. Gracie, you right there on that play. Gain of 14, so already surpassed what he did all in one game against Colorado State. Seeley chucks it away, and another big hit laid down by UIW. Trevor Crane was there. The big hit laid down by Markel Cooks. And they certainly made him pay at, at times. So while Seeley's had some passing, we've also seen him take some big bops today. Yeah, oh no, he got a nice chip block there. He might have gotten destroyed on the back end of this thing, but just took the guy to the ground and just a smidge too late, but good pressure there by Markel Cooks. Cooks just a sophomore. Pretty experienced defensive line and linebacking core, though, for UIW. Seeley over the head, and then Crane gets hit hard. And flags fly. Jawan Giles didn't make any attempt on that ball, just went head hunting. And that's such a dangerous play in football. The defensive receiver, they have that for a reason. Yeah, indeed. I mean, he wasn't even playing the ball. I don't know how the umpire didn't even see it, but the back judge sure did. Yeah, and then finally three flags came in, but it's just scary to see it on initial impact as well. Yeah, he might get ejected. We'll see how they play this out, but mercy. Just glad everybody lived to talk about that one. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, number 27 defense. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So personal foul, but no targeting and no targeting injection, which can come with that. I'll just let the tape speak for itself. Mm. So Giles stays in there. But the Wildcats are threatening once again. And all second half replays are presented by Home Vesters. Need to sell your home quickly? Call Home Vesters, the We Buy Ugly Houses people. 1 800 44 Buyer.
Well, Abilene Christian has scored on four consecutive drives since this was a 7-6 ball game. And James has space around the corner, but a flag flies as he makes the turn. We've seen a couple of holds tonight, haven't we? You know, it's, again, we don't want to guess because we've been wrong a lot tonight. <laughs> but it's fairly evident when someone Holding has space offense, and it opens up on the side. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. That's the one thing about these holding penalties for Abilene Christian. They really haven't hurt them or slowed them down much. They just add to their total yards for this football game. But those are costly. Those are four penalties for 45 yards, all on UIW plus side of the field. Yeah, you can see, might have had their pick there. <laughs> How many guys were being held? Holding on the offense. Just throw all the flags. Short pass out to the slot. Balls dives towards the original line of scrimmage. He'll be stopped shy of the 15-yard line. Andre Washington made the tackle. He's a senior from Katy, Texas. He's recovered a fumble all four years. Interesting little cork there. A fun fact. Good pursuit that time and good physicality at the end of that. That's what you like to say. Play whistle to whistle and bring it that way. Now here's the defining stat. Five for five. And red zone touchdowns tonight for Abilene Christian. And James, stutter step. Waited on a blocker, but not forthcoming. Just a horde of gray jerseys. Yeah, really nice job cutting that thing back inside because the whole left side of the UIW defense was able to get upfield and force that back inside. There was just nobody there to take him down. So we'll see what... Abilene Christian has in store for us here on third and 10. I mean, again, they've, so any kind of a stop here for UIW's defense would be monumental at this point. They've been effective four for seven on third downs, or one of four on third downs. Seeley runs out of space and manages to dive back across the line of scrimmage, but Abilene Christian Looks like they may be stopped of their perfect touchdown pursuit inside the red zone tonight. Well, we'll see if they can make this come true because, again, we were watching this young man kick field goals before the game, and I was just marveling how 52 seemed like a layup for this guy. Now, Nick Grau, his long this year is only 29. This looks like it's 27 right now. Grau sends it up, and it's good. Well, the scoring continues. Might not have been a touchdown, but Abilene Christian has now scored on its last five possessions. Yeah, it's one of those two, though. It's what you'd like to see if you're Abilene Christian. I mean, as well as things went for you in the first half, to come out and score on your first possession, that's key. 38 to six, early going in the third quarter. Quarter, 38 to six, Abilene Christian. The deficit grows even larger for the Wildcats. Tonight's second half scoring summaries are brought to you by North Star Dodge. Open Sunday, North Star Dodge is your savings destination. Another long march down the field, and then Nick Grau caps it off the 28-yard field goal. Yeah. Now four for seven this season. And now finally the penalty comes back to kind of bite them on that one. Everything was going their way, and then the hold kind of wrecked that drive and kept them out of the end zone, at least for the time being. All right, Gilbert's had that, and he got tripped up by the turf monster. He's everywhere. <laughs> and a little bit of jawing. You know, maybe some frustrations boiling over from UIW, and then some tensions after that last sequence when we talked about the, the personal foul penalty on Jawan Giles. And those refs just had to separate the two squads briefly after the kickoff. Well, that's good. I mean, you want to see some fight, and I know that they probably got a nice chew-in on at halftime, as well they should have. So, you know, you come out with a little bit of fight, nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's football, not tiddlywinks, as Kay Stevenson used to tell us back in the days when he was coaching CFL here in San Antonio. A little flip to Gilbert. And he got 
a little bit further forward than expected. Was pushed out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage and then lunged about three or four yards more. We're going to finish off that run. And there's your favorite guy, Dante Hibbert, number 92. Remember made the big wrap-up oh, yeah. on his own quarterback earlier? Hibbert was the one that threw him down. He said at 6'2", 315 pounds. Played a couple of years at Independence Community College. Yeah, that's what we call the old space eater out there. Sitting there on that right edge alongside Datrion Diem. Profi quick out in and out of the hands of Baptiste. And bring up another passing opportunity. Yeah, good route. Just a hard time making a connection and having a hard time coming up and trying to get a rhythm. It's been hard ever since that third drive where they were able to cap it and go into the end zone. Again, a lot of credit to the Abilene Christian defense. I mean, they've made nothing easy on this offense for UIW all night long. The Cardinals are two for eight on third downs, and they need the 35-yard line. Brophy out to Baptiste again, over his hands, incomplete. Jamar Mack in on the coverage. And it's a three and out to start the second half for UIW. Yeah, not what they wanted, that's for sure. Hoping to try to get something going here to start the second half. and Something to talk about here between now and the next time they get the ball back. And Chase Coakley back to return. So Abilene Christian's looking for their first conference road win since 2014. And look at this booming punt by Joe Zima, pushing back Justin Miller. Rather, that was Coakley on the play. And the late flag flies after a good return. Well, the penalties have started to pile up here on the Wildcats. And who knows how much yardage they might have had. That's going to push them back into the shadow of their end zone. Yeah, you know, and it's starting to get a little chippy now because, like, that block in the back wasn't anywhere near the guy returning the football. So <laughs> you get the feeling that guys are settling scores out here at this point. You know, conference opponents, a lot of these guys, if they're upperclassmen, they have played every year. During the return, a legal block in the back, number 56 of the return team, that penalty has declined. Also during the return, a legal block in the back, number 41 of the receiving team, that penalty will be accepted. 10-yard penalty, first down. Who? <laughs> Correction. Penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. You had your choice. It was like a list on that play. Well, great emotion there from Adam Dorrell, his first season after six years at D2 Northwest Missouri State. And Adam Dorrell, a guy that you know, he's used to winning. Yeah, winning a lot. I mean, man, this guy's resume, I mean, you talk about three national championships in Division II. I mean, wow. This guy... Quite a good start to his career. James trying to just get it out of the end zone. He's able to fight back towards the five-yard line. Markel Cooks leading the charge in the linebacking court. You know, it was so cool. You know, we were talking to him this week, Coach Doral. We watched this play snuffed out by UIW's defense. It's the fact that he talked about, you know, uprooting his family, going from Missouri to Abilene, and how close it made he and his daughters you know, all having to trek across the country to go do their thing to move to a new spot. And he goes, hey, man, you moved to a new town. You don't know anybody. You can't help but get stronger as a family unit. I thought that was really cool that he talked about that this week. He's trying to right the ship here at Abilene Christian. After a couple of losing seasons the past few years in their transition to a full FBS member, FCS member. So we've talked so much about UIW and this is their first year. They're linked with Abilene Christian. Both of them came into FCS together, both granted full status this year. So they're always going to have that kind of tie. And now they can compete for Southland Conference championships moving forward. Yeah, and it's not like, as you know, Coach Cannon pointed out to us, that these programs were having a whole lot of success when they decided they were going to make the jump up. So it's really, really hard. You know, you're trying to build your team and you know, dealing with all the extra scholarships and everything else and the recruiting and to try to deal with the level up. But both of these teams are 
you're right, kind of in the same canoe. You know, you're trying to build on the fly, and you're in a tough conference where these guys, some of these teams like Central Arkansas and Sam have really been doing it and doing it well for many, many years. Well, Seeley completed it to Miller, but not going to be enough. If there's one aspect where Abilene Christian has struggled, it's on third down conversions. They're now just one for six. And a long fourth down will bring out Simon Laria. He's had a couple of booming punts today. Had a 69-yard punt early in the game. Has punted three times, one for 44 yards as well. Yeah, and you have a 38-6 lead there. You kind of get to the point where you're managing this football game a little bit, and Evelyn Christian not wanting to make the big mistake down on their end, played a little conservatively on that drive. Everyone coming, and that one is blocked. Ball rolling around on the turf, and UIW is going to take over in prime position. They sent the house and have paid off for their second block kick of the night. The proverbial jailbreak and just what UIW needed at this point. They've already turned in one big special teams play tonight. Unfortunately, the last time they blocked a punt, it still won 30 yards. Not this time. They sent everybody there and just overwhelmed the guys that were up there trying to block. Well, everyone was in on that. It's hard to say exactly. Yeah, it's hard who to see was that hand big on. hand down low there. But there were a lot of gray jerseys and might have been Dari uh, Darius Montgomery again. It was Montgomery with his second block kick of the game, and UIW has their best opportunity of the night taking over right at the ten yard line. Boy, just what they needed. I thought it might have been Israel Ukwai, but you're right. Good play though, all the way around. Oh, Brophy's got Mitchell next to him. Lobs one over the top, hold in for the touchdown. Giselle Perra on the touchdown grab. Brophy has his first touchdown pass in the night. UIW capitalizes on the turnover. Pinpoint pass there, no doubt about it. Touch pass, not easy to do, not an easy completion to make, obviously with the defender draped all over the receiver, but put in the only spot he could, which was into his receiver's hands and UIW finally knocked some rust off of this one. And Para is 6'3", junior, he's got some size. Perfect touch pass by Brophy. And UIW converts on the extra point. A one play, 10 yards, and the first touchdown pass for Brophy. It was set up though by the big block, and here we see it again, the jailhouse break for UIW. Boy, it's amazing they could get that much pressure just overloading things and then capping it off with the six. UIW strikes. Go with the onside kick. Thought they might try to catch everyone off guard, but it turns out everyone's expecting it. And just a deep, booming kickoff into the end zone where it's down for a touchback. Right now, let's go down to the sidelines at Valerie Lopez. Thanks, guys. I'm here alongside the ACU sidelines, and I noticed something really interesting. On the player's helmet at the very bottom, it says, say less. Basically, it's a hashtag that the players came up with this season, and it means quit talking and do work. Back to you guys. Thanks, Valerie. Very interesting stuff there. and it, Kind of the mentality that uh, these coaches talked about, stressing their doing their particular part, doing their 111. They also talked about as well. Do your job on the field, and it will take care of everyone else's. It seems like they have literally put mantra to paper, or helmet in this case. See, Lana Toss, James corrals it. And there he goes, Tracy James cutting through tacklers. James has some space, and he's going to move the train all the way down into UIW territory. Well, it almost looked like that was in slow motion. I mean, he just, first of all, he did a nice job getting the hand on the ball, because it was just one hand. But as we speak, officials of huddle. And now the receiver downfield, number three of the offense. That five-yard penalty being forced from the previous spot. Well, for Abilene Christian, you just have to think, all right, stop self-inflicting these penalties. Every great play this half has seemed to have been brought back. Well, it's not very often you see a wide receiver get caught for something like that. It's usually an offensive lineman that's the guy downfield illegally, but I don't know. We have a correction on the ruling of the play. The ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage, therefore there is no foul for an elder receiver downfield. 
Hey, you got one right tonight, Nicotinic. Good job. <laughs> so they walked halfway back, and they walk all the way back down to where the game actually ended. And how about this play by Tracy James? Look at the catch. She just set this up. Well, I just thought it was just a cool play design. I haven't seen that. You know, you fake the handoff, then you act like you're going to run this play to the right, then you flip it back, and then you're right. Tracy James makes not only a nice play to receive the ball, but then just the vision and you know, some of the nice blocking you got downfield was pretty sweet, too. Yeah, Austin Heisler and Chance Reekin on that left side really moved everyone downfield. Sealy pumps. And sidearm slings it out of bounds. With the way he has created tonight, I almost thought he was trying to pass that from a sidearm slot to one of his receivers. You know, it's interesting, and you watch a quarterback go through his, possession, or his progressions like he just did. He wanted his guy going deep there and then didn't see anybody, but he had a guy flash right underneath there if he'd have just seen the guy. I think that was Hunter Lease, 86. But kind of tough to do sometimes to see everybody when you got defenders barreling down in your face. Well, Seeley got hit, and we'll get the ball off. And James was met immediately. Now, a little bit more enthusiasm defensively here for UIW now. The helmet came off of Quandre Washington after he made the tackles, who has to sprint out. Playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. That did not happen enough in the first half of this football game. Yeah, UIW definitely seems invigorated after that last touchdown. And a big chance here with a third down coming up. Sean Washington has checked in. The Wildcats just one for six on third downs tonight. And they need the 28-yard line. Seeley has to run again. And he has to slide down with the pressure. Darius Montgomery, we keep saying his name. He keeps getting into the backfield. Yeah, we're saluting you back, young man. You've had a whale of a football game, not only on defense, but on special teams. But again, a low snap. We've seen that several times tonight. And normally, you know, that's going to throw off the rhythm of the play. It did right there. The quarterback's got to scramble for his life. but. They've been able to overcome these low snaps all night long. And Seeley got Not twisted up. He's he's hobbled. He's limping back to the sideline. And now is still limping as he goes back to that near side. And that's a, of potential concern for Abilene Christian. Yeah, I'll say, especially with the, uh, the job that he's had, the game that he's had tonight. Timeout. Abilene Christian. This is their first charge team timeout. This is also a media timeout. UIW trying to get some momentum. They'll have the ball when we come back. UIW set to receive after that timeout before the Abilene Christian punt. But worrisome for the Wildcats. Their star quarterback on the sideline, he looks like he's in some pain. And it looks like UIW is going to bring the house again. Larry gets it off, got knocked down. Got that one high. And for a guy who's already had two punts blocked tonight, it's good to get it up and get it out of there. There is no foul for running to the kicker. The kicker ran into his own man. Now, as you see Dallas Seeley on the sideline, I saw him. Does not look like he's feeling all that hot right now. Although you couldn't tell by his stats. I mean, that's just one heck of a performance so far by this young man. But he's taking some shots, especially on that last play. And he was wincing in a lot of pain. It's going to be curious to see if he's going to be able to continue. I mean, this being a four-possession game, too, right now, maybe one of those, even if he can go, give him a series off just to see if they're going to need it the rest of the night. Although UIW can make this awfully interesting if they could go down and get some points right here. And we did see Luke Anthony, their backup quarterback, warming up. And right now, UIW with the ball. And Mitchell running strong, out of bounds after a short game. I mean, still plenty of time, obviously. And we talked about these guys being no strangers to big deficits. And what they were able to do against Stephen F. two weeks ago was absolutely stunning. I mean, you're getting stroked at the half, 21-0, and then to roar back like they did almost pull that one off they had a chance to win the ball game they had their they had their hands on the ball late 
just couldn't quite seal the deal. Well, Brophy has tossed it a lot, 23 attempts, just 95 yards. That's a good haul. And then carrying the pile forward a little bit further, John Myers, a sophomore from Texas. Yeah, clearly a load too, and I've really been impressed. I know we were talking to the Abilene coaches this week, and they really wanted to emphasize again the art of tackling. And it's harder to do, I think, nowadays because, first of all, the game's so hard to officiate these days, but you know, just the amount of padded practices that you can have, it's difficult to go ask guys to go and tackle when you don't get a chance to practice it all that much. Mitchell out of a couple tackles into the second line. And those are some nifty moves in the backfield. Derek Mitchell made a play out of nothing. Jamar Mack finally brought him down. Well, yeah, only his shiftiness and elusiveness made that happen because that looked like it was going nowhere. He sure has looked the part. You can see why the coaching staff is glad that he decided to come to UIW to finish out his collegiate career. That was a late addition, too. Mitchell wasn't here in time for the opener at Fresno State. They worked him in against Sacramento State. Had 11 yards and a touchdown. And now he's starting to get more familiar with the offense. Laquan Dickens in to spell him. Dickens gets dragged just short of the first down marker. Brandon Richmond made a critical tackle just short of the 38-yard line. Yeah, Raquan Dickens from Highland, Kansas, doing a nice job there, hitting that hole awfully quick and giving his team a burst. Look at this third down, somewhat manageable. Big third down for UIW. Two for nine tonight on third down conversions. And with only 17 minutes left in this ball game. As big of a third down attempt as you'll have the rest of the night. Nothing in the backfield. Mitchell tries to spin, but he's tied up. That's one of those where you got to check out of that. I mean, there was as dirty a box as you're ever going to see up here. Everybody keying in on the run, not to mention you're blitzing on top of it. Now, Royce nowhere Moore, to go. Yeah, led the charge, but they snuffed that one out. There was no confusion on the Wildcats part what was coming. Chase Coakley back. Joe Zima has boomed a few. And almost got that one blocked. Angling it away, and it will take a bounce back towards Abilene Christian. Well, a third quarter winding down. And the Cardinals, they're going to need some stops. But we'll see who comes out right now. So this is the big question mark for Abilene Christian. Remember, Dallas Seeley limped off. And look at that, number one runs back out there. Tells you all you need to know about that guy, right? A little banged up, but you're not taking me out, even in a four-score game. Redshirt junior from Lawton, Oklahoma. Second full season as the starter. Or he passed for over 2,700 yards last year. And Seeley has all day. Lobs one over the middle. It's hauled in by Whitley. Dragging his defender to midfield. And there's the San Antonio native Carl Whitley. Another big gainer. Oh, and his offensive line really stepping up too because you know, they know their guy's a little bit banged up. But look at the protection that is afforded the quarterback on that play. And then zipping right in there. And zipping one in there, I should say. Very tight window. And... Really good job by Whitley showing up with strong hands to secure the ball and pick up the sticks. 24-yard reception. Got 13 receptions this year. James wasn't ready for it, but Seeley was just chucking it away out of pressure. Tim McCoy got in there and forced the pocket out. There's an injured lineman, Dakota Laws, he is down for Abilene Christian. That's a tough one to lose. Their right tackle. He started every game last year. And it was an honorable mention all Southland Conference. And for a quarterback that's already taken some big hits, Law is one of their better linemen. I saw him grab his toes. And hopefully it's all it is is a cramp. But it's really hard to say. Usually running around all night doing that, you hope that's all it is. But... 
Sometimes you get that calf locked up on you and you're hoping somebody comes and just pushes the front of your foot. And these are some big bodies hitting down there in the line yeah. on every play. Look at that, 6'4", 305. And you're probably mashing up with another big lineman, you know, Corey Lee and Darius Montgomery on the defensive side. They're 260 plus, so just explosive contact on every play. You know, that's got to wear down alignment. Yeah. As we watch the trainers and the doctors do their thing, too. And we'll hope for the best. Always good news when they can get up and walk, although Laws certainly being helped gingerly coming toward the sideline. A ball to 49 for Abilene Christian. Been a low scoring second half. Actually, UIW leads the second half 7 to 3. After the potent offense of the Wildcats, put up 35 in the first half. Quick pitch. Whitley gets it. And shrugs off a man and gets into UIW territory. Yeah, Whitley's another man that looks like he's. You know, with maturity since his days at Roosevelt's filled out a little bit. He's not an easy guy to bring down either. You know, you get him out there in space like he is and let him create. Able to pick up a couple of more extra yards there with his body and strength. But another third down. This has been a tough area for Abilene Christian. One for seven tonight. Seeley looking long, and just had to throw it away. Whitley had a look at it, and it was over and out of the outstretch reach. Cam Knight had the good coverage, and another fourth down. Yeah, UIW starting to dial it up now a little bit defensively, getting a little more pressure back there as this game kind of has worn on. Good job pressing right there by Ukwai and some others, collapsing the whole right side of the ACU offensive line on that particular play. Braylon McCollum is back. Senior receiver out of Steele. Runs up and makes a pressure-packed fair catch. Yeah, that's, it, that's tough. Isn't yeah. it funny, too? You're the punter, and you've had a couple. But these guys are right in your face, and you kind of hurry your kick that time, even though they pulled back. Yeah, short punt, just 27 yards there. Giving them something to think about. By Hilaria. But, you know, you're kicking directionally. You're trying to pin them inside the 20. And the ball is just a nose inside the 20. And Sean Brophy runs out there. Now, Brophy, a sophomore from Arizona. Spent a year at Glendale Community College. And now here and thrust into the starting lineup after the injury to Taylor Laird. To the sideline. Baptiste has space. Makes the catch and then dives back across the 35-yard line. Eric Hewn going to make the stop. But Baptiste found some separation and Brophy found him. Oh, indeed he did. I mean, this is as good a route as you're ever going to see. I mean, Baptiste is running down the field as hard as he can and then digs back towards the ball. And he let the defender snapped his ankles coming back for that one. I mean, got himself a lot of separation. So the defense was playing him over the top. Now, Baptiste is a guy didn't even play in the first two games of the season and had 60 yards earlier. Well, we are through three quarters. It's all Abilene Christian, 38 to 13 on a citywide sports network. Start of the fourth quarter, and it's been all Abilene Christian, the road Wildcats. Trying to grab their first Southland Conference win on the road since 2014. The final game of the 2014 season had a two-point win at Stephen F. Austin. Since then, winless on the road, 2015 and 2016. Brophy coming out long. Over the head of Baptiste, incomplete. I didn't think that was possible, <laughs> right? To overthrow him. As we go along, the amount of guys that Coach Cannon worked out when he was the head of the 
NFL Coaches Association. You get, get guys ready for the draft. Brophy airing it out again. It's Gilbert, but over his head, incomplete. Well, all fourth quarter action tonight on the Citywide Sports Network is presented by IHOP. Eat up every moment. Oh, that was one they'd like to have back, I'm sure of that. Now, Gilbert was very open. I think they are sagging off in coverage. Yeah, it was a bust. He just mistimed his jump a little bit. Big third down, just two for 10 tonight. The Cardinals have had trouble converting. They're only at 22% this season in third down conversions. Brophy evades, pass caught, but then Zaire Andre is tackled short of the marker. In corner word, this is their first charge team timeout. This is also a media timeout. Oh, well, big fourth down coming up for UIW. So far, it's Abilene Christian, 38 to 13 early on in the fourth. Big fourth down here for UIW. Push back into their own territory. They need the 45-yard line. It's one for three on fourth, down, fourth downs this season. Brophy, quick toss and well out of the reach. UIW wanted contact, none forthcoming. Derek Mitchell. Quick pitch goes over to Justin Miller, and that was Luke Anthony into the game. So Dallas Seeley may be from the injury earlier or because it's a commanding lead, he's going to have the rest of the game off. And that's the redshirt freshman Anthony out of Fort Worth, Texas, coming in. Yeah, I went to all Saints Episcopal School up there in Fort Worth. And as you can see, six of 10 and a couple of strikes. So he's made the most of his playing time as well. And Abilene Christian, I, I think, probably glad to have him for more ways than one. So they, they have their brand new stadium, you know, Wildcat Stadium, but it's named Anthony Field. And it's named that because the largest donor gift came from his family. Really? And they literally helped them build their brand new on-campus stadium. And it's a nice one, beautiful facility there in Abilene. A couple of backups starting to get into this game. Miles Salisbury, the reception there. Well, I think Coach Doyle is going to be very excited about the performance that his team put together tonight. You know, save for a couple of snafus on special teams. But, I mean, they were really good on offense. We talked about their defense. and. I was really impressed with their cornerbacks and how they get after you. Very, very well-rounded performance on both sides of the football tonight for Abilene Christian. And Washington drove the pile close to the first down marker. Doesn't look like he got it, though. So now just one for nine on third down conversions tonight. Andre Washington made the big tackle. And the offense wants to stay on on fourth down. Hey, if you're, if you're Luke Anthony, you're the backup, I'm sure you want to stay out there as much as possible. Well, I mean, the biggest thing here is, you know, yeah, you're getting some younger guys some snaps too, and they want to chip away at this clock as well. Anthony slings out to the side. There's open space, and here's a burst of speed. Justin Miller accelerates and dives into the end zone. That's a fourth down play. Wow. I know every play is designed to take it to the house, but did not see that one coming. We're just going to be content with trying to pick up the sticks here. Mercy, Justin Miller showing off the speed. A little throw out there, and... Boy, just enough of a block out there by Chase Coakley from Austin Westlake High School. And then it was Katie bar the door. I don't know if anybody even touched him on his way into the end zone. Yeah, he accelerated through that initial gap. And Abilene Christian continues to put up the points. 34-yard touchdown. And the acceleration by Justin Miller, four plays, 43 yards. And who says the second team's running out the offense? They're going to run it to the house. Abilene Christian, up big. 
Abilene Christian up 45 to 13. Luke Anthony, backup quarterback, comes in and on fourth down hits Justin Miller for the 34-yard touchdown. To cap off a quick hitting drive, four plays, 43 yards. And the Wildcats keep piling it on. Derek Mitchell now back to return. Got some space, but then wrapped up shy of the 25-yard line by Brandon Richmond. State in the third. At the best state for college football right now, Washington. Washington State had the big win over USC last night. You know, some valuable opportunity here for the sophomore. Just can't have him get hurt. Fires it over the top and too hot to handle for Zaire Andre. Brophy now 30 passing attempts, 18 for 30, 130 yards. Yeah, the sledding has been tough and been playing behind, from behind all night long. So you're going to see some of these wompy jog passing stats on the UIW side. You know, it's about trying to find something positive here, the silver lining as we finish out these last 10 or so minutes of this football game. See if we can't get something going. Got to get a first down first here on third and four. Brophy to the far side, defender slipped. Philip Baptiste takes advantage of it. Aaron and out long, Brophy back that way. And there's Baptiste again. Yeah, right, the hot hand, right? The guy continually getting open too, and that's that's another thing. Sometimes it's overlooked if you're a wide receiver. Guys that get open are gonna get the ball. He has been getting open a lot, although that was a darn good throw as well. Coming back for the football, just a good all-around sequence there for UIW. 25 yards to Baptiste. They've had a couple of guys who have come in late, like a Mitchell and Baptiste. And I think once you fully get them into the offense, this will really be a pretty effective Cardinals team to watch. Brophy over to the far sideline. Big leaping snag pulled in by Cam Johnson. We've seen some elevation tonight from both of these teams' receivers. Yeah, and he took, took a shot and paid the price there. I mean, hard to say exactly what got hurt, but I'm sure everything's going to smart when you get thrown to the turf and your head slams against the carpet. Yeah, he's coming out, motion to the sideline that he needed to come out after taking the big hit by Corey Richardson. You get a lot of love in the tape room on Monday when they look at the film there. I mean, you're getting beat 45-13, and guys are going up and, Still sacrificing here late in the football game. Jamari Gilbert was in the huddle and then ran off. And there's a the flag. I, I think that might have been 12 men in the huddle. Gilbert was there and then ran off the field. But you know what happens when we try to guess. <laughs> <laughs> Big Melvin Brown. Offsides, yep, defense see. number 13, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, first down. Wow, Adonis Davis is human. I was <laughs> starting to think. Brophy to the end zone. Over the hands of Jamari Gilbert, so the flag does fly, and there's Davis on the coverage. You want to talk about kind of painful Jamari Gilbert Personal foul. limping off Dance a little to the bit. Face. Defense, number 95. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Now the penalty yardage is racking up uh, against Abilene Christian. And that's kind of pushed UIW down the field. And take a, take a look at this. Both of these guys collide out of bounds onto the track. That can't feel very good. Yeah. That's not going to be fun. Right into the long jump pit. I mean, maybe the pole vault pit over there. Looks like a pole vault pit. It's some road rash on the end of that. But Makone Poye with the illegal hands of the Time face. And there was no Abilene question that he Christian. did that. This is their second charge, correction, in Hornet word. This is their second charge team timeout. This is immediate timeout. So Abilene Christian, they try to make a defensive stand. UIW trying to punch it in at red zone. First and goal for the Cardinals. It's the home opener tonight for UIW. They didn't play a home game for the past 317 days. Dickens gets the pitch. Accelerates to the right side, and Raquan Dickens races in for the score from seven yards out. That's just the second rushing touchdown this season for UIW. Eric Mitchell had the other. 
Yeah, it's been tough sledding in terms of running the football this year, although it looked like you know, the last time out against Stephen Epp, it was going to start to get something going in that regard. But rough tonight till they got Dickens. that Yeah, they were behind big early on. Showed 35 to 6 at halftime. And on the other side, you know, Coach Doral was telling us, you know, how are we going to look to you guys? How do we pass the eye test? With the extra week of practice, you know, you usually feel like you're going to get better when you got the extra week. But I'm just wondering if the Stephen F. game and how that ended, there was a little bit of a hangover effect for Quay UIW. And Quayshawn Washington with the high snap corralled by Anthony and finally gets rid of it. And Washington keeps driving the pile forward. That's impressive. That's impressive. And here you are. That play gets busted up early because of the rhythm of the bad snap, and then there's about five guys on 45's back, and that thing still goes forward. That's the kind of fight Coach Doyle's going to love at the end of the day. And that's the kind of fight he got from his entire squad tonight. But another third down. And the Wildcats are just one for nine tonight, third down conversions. You know, that may be the future backfield, the Washington and James, who we saw as the starter, just a freshman and a sophomore. The future looks pretty bright for Abilene Christian. Out of the backfield to Qualls, shifting through and dives for the first. Qualls and Miller, a lot of work in the backfield, and that free in space. Washington stood up, and that time he can't dance out of traffic. Quick. Confuse everyone. Timeout. And put them back on the Abilene field. Christian. That was this a strange is their sequence. Second charge team timeout. This is a 30 correction. This is a full timeout. Well, Abilene Christian will have it when we come back, trying to lock this one down. The Wildcats lead 45 to 20, looking for their first road conference win since 2014. Abilene Christian trying to run some more clock. Just over five minutes remaining. Touchdowns and pass for another. And the backup, Luke Anthony. Has run the offense for the most part of this fourth quarter. Class programs. Anthony with time. Tucks it, but nothing there in a big hit. And he falls forward after taking a shot. For Coach Kennan, it's back to the drawing board. I know he's not going to be happy with the final results tonight. That's for sure. Well, the clock operator, please. The Southland Conference the game. standings are presented by MySA.com, largest voice in South Texas for 150 years. So for UIW, if they don't have a massive rally, they're going to fall to 0-2 in the conference. Now Abilene can climb back into a crowded middle of the pack, and there's Stephen F. Austin who's going to suffer its first loss. So it gets pretty interesting for the Wildcats. You have an opportunity these next few weeks against these top teams in the league. But I mean, you look at all these teams. I mean, Nichols, McNeese, Northwestern State, Central Arkansas, Sam Houston State, the aforementioned Stephen F. I mean, every week in this league, you're getting a really tough football team that you've got to play. And again, UIW is doing strides to close the gaps in terms of playing toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of these teams physically. They're obviously just having a bad night tonight. Braylon McCollum back deep to receive. And calls our fair catch, falls down, but anything to ensure you get it. Brophy has really had to air it out, 21 for 33, for a little over 180 yards. Backfiring again, this one's caught and pulled in by Baptiste. Well, one thing. Brophy, long throw to the far sideline, tipped in, and underclassmen, so they'll be back next year. Brophy steps up. Looking downfield, fires to the sideline, and hauled in by Gilbert. The sticks, close to midfield now. UIW trying to mount another scoring drive. Brophy over the head, and too far for Baptiste. Not a bad night, but just been a little off all night. And Brophy falls down to avoid what would have been a massive hit by Jaleel Carter. Brophy taken off and slides down again. Well, that's a guy who has been injured a couple of times in his career, and he wisely dove to avoid a big hit. Here is because of Cardinals grad assistant Hunter Holmes. He played with a punter from Australia at Arkansas State. That's how they heard about Zima at Pro Kick Australia. Coakley calls for the fair catch. 
And they push back to the 15-yard line. It's such a sporting country, Australia. I mean, the baseball players that have come out of there, the golfers, I mean, supplied a lot of the world's greatest athletes. Now time for a look at your player of the game. Your Babe's Old Fashioned Food Player of the Game tonight is... Is there any drama here, Chuck? I don't think so. Number one on your roster, number one in your heart, and boy, did Dallas Seeley step up tonight doing everything. Sneaking it in, running the ball, chucking it deep, sneaking it in some more. Dallas Seeley from Oklahoma really doing a marvelous job running this offense, extending plays with his feet, managing the game, dropping dimes and playing hurt there at the end. Yeah. Whale of a performance. And I think you, you can say he did so well that he earned himself a quarter off the lead, <laughs> right? with the lead this big. It was so effective that now he just gets to stand on the sideline for the rest of the game. Yeah, 21 of 31 throwing it. Most of those passing yards came in the in the first two quarters, but boy, they just did such a nice job moving the ball up and down the field in that first half. Really made things uncomfortable for UIW all night long. Going into the second quarter, and he had that long pass to Troy Grant, and after that it was all Wildcats. Aaron Bunting now in at running back. That's to Anthony. Gets the carry, finds space to the left, and drives the pile forward to, towards the first down marker. Jaquarius Miller makes the tackle. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense, number 97, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. It goes on Tyler Colbert, senior nose tackle. There might be some payback for a couple of drives previous where we had illegal hands in the face. And that's going to march from the end of the run. Abilene well forward. That's from the end of the run, too, so everything that Aaron Bunting did, then you're going to march 15 yards forward. And we saw how quick this Abilene offense scored on that fourth down play from Anthony to Miller. I wouldn't necessarily say they're they're done scoring yet. I don't know. There's only 41 seconds left. So <laughs> I was going to say, they're not necessarily done, but yeah. I don't think they're going to be actively trying to score either. Balls comes around the left side. Actually, Kalen Sadler gets it and finds his way towards the left sideline. Well, following the game, stay with us for the Sports Tonight post-game show. Sports Tonight airs every night at 10 p.m. on KCWX. And now I think they're done scoring. Helmets are off on the sideline. Players starting to walk onto the field. And the Abilene Christian faithful who made the four-hour trip down here, they all are standing and applauding. Their Wildcats pick up the first win on the road in conference since 2014. And they do it by the score of 45 to 20. We'll come back. We'll go down to the field and hear from Coach Doral with our Valerie Lopez after this. Abilene Christian a winner tonight.